number systems remainder theorem let us see the statement of remainder theorem the remainder when the product of a series of numbers are divided by another number is the same as the remainder of the product of the remainder of the numbers divided by the same number now this statement may sound confusing but when you will see how this works it would be easy to understand let us see explanation how remainder theorem works let us divide 6 by 4 so 4 ones are 4 this gives 2 as a remainder again divide 6 into 3 by 4 that is 18 by 4 4 so 4 four fours are 16 this will give 2 as a remainder now further on dividing 6 into 3 into 13 by 4 you will get 2 as a remainder but to obtain the product of terms Like six into three into thirteen is really a tiresome job, so we shall find some another approach. Let us move ahead and find it out. Instead of multiplying six into three into thirteen and then dividing dividing it by four, we shall follow some other route. First, divide six. By four, we get two as a remainder. Divide this three by four. That is three by four. So four zeros are zero, and you get three. Now divide thirteen. By four, four threes are twelve, and answer is one. This is the remainder when you divide thirteen by four. Now, take the product of all three remainders. That is one into two into three. That gives us six. Now divide the product obtained again by the same number, that is four. So four ones are four, and you get two as a remainder. Now, if you would have taken the product of these three numbers and then you would have divided by four. you would have got the same remainder as we saw on the previous slide this is the basic fundamental of remainder theorem so i hope you got clear yourself about how this really works and it will be very much useful in determining the remainders the question on remainders are frequently asked in examinations like cat gmat and gre okay let us move ahead and discover some uh, tricky questions regarding this theorem in the following slides we shall see the sums based on this theorem it is strongly advised to go through the explanation of remainder theorem again if you are having a slightest doubt at the concept because if you are having a slightest doubt in even a single step of the remainder theorem you won't be able to get how these sums are solved okay let us move ahead what is the remainder you get when you divide 5 is to 125 by 124 now to obtain the value of 5 is to 125 manually is not possible almost next to impossible you will need electronic devices like calculator and computers so when you encounter such question in examination where there is uh, 
use of calculator is not allowed it then what we shall do okay let us see now power of 5 close to 124 is 3 that is 5 cube is 125 so 5 raised to 125 upon 124 can be written as 5 cube into 5 cube into 5 cube into 5 cube 41 times into 5 square how can we write it like this let us see 41 into 3 will give you 41 into 3 will give you 3 1 ja 3 4 3 are 12 123 and this square makes it 125 so we are just expanding this for y raised to 125 in this way upon 124 now divide 5 cube by 124 5 cube by 124 41 times okay every time you will get 1 as a reminder so according to remainder theorem we can write it like this 5 uh, 1 into 1 into 1 into 1 41 times into 5 squared upon 124 and 25 upon 124 will obviously give you reminder as 25 itself because it is not divisible by 124 okay very is some isn't it the concept I think you should have gotten it by now let us move ahead when 2 raised to 256 is divided by 17 what is the remainder now this sum seems similar to the previous one but here denominator is not close to the bar of base number so we have to use a little bit different approach let us try to solve it when 2 is divided by 17 you get reminder 2 when 2 square is divided by 17 you get reminder 4 when 2 cube is divided by 17 you get reminder 8 when 2 raised to 4 is divided by 17, you get remainder 16. When 2 raised to 5 is divided by 17, you get remainder 15. When 2 raised to 6 is divided by 17, you get remainder 13. When 2 raised to 7 is divided by 17, you get remainder 9. And when 2 raised to 8 is divided by 17, you get the desired result. When you divide 2 raised to 8 by 17, your remainder is 1. And that is what is always required to solve such kind of question. See, one is a very peculiar property. You can multiply it as many times as you wish and still its value always remains 1. Moreover, 1 raised to any damn number is always 1. Okay. So, you can write 2 raised to 256 like this. 2 raised to 8 into 32. Now, divide... 2 raised to 256 by 17 and that is what we need to do so 2 raised to 8 raised to 32 divided by 17 expand it like this 2 raised to 8 into 2 raised to 8 into 2 raised to 8 30 times upon 17 now divide 2 raised to 8 by 17 2 raised to 8 by 17 2 raised to 8 by 17 32 times and every time you will get 1 as a reminder so according to remainder theorem you can write it like this this is step R stands for reminder theorem. You, you can write this step like this. And this product will eventually turn, turn out as 1. Because 1 multiplied 32 times will always be 1. And 1 upon 17 will give reminder 1. Because 1 is not divisible further by 17. Easy, isn't it? Again, I would like to remind you. Just go through this again if you have slightest doubt in this question okay let us move ahead this is one more question which is based on remainder theorem n is equal to 1 5 2 1 into 1 5 2 3 into 1 5 2 5 and we are asked to obtain the remainder when you divide this term by 12 now div on dividing 1 5 2 1 by 12 you will get 9 as a reminder it is very simple you can obtain this by our regular division method now 1523 is equal to 1521 plus 2 obviously so 1523 divided by 12 gives reminder 9 plus 2 that is 11 and similarly 
you will obtain remainder 13 when you will divide 1 5 to 5 by 12. Now according to remainder theorem you can replace 1 5 2 1 1 5 2 3 and 1 5 2 5 by the respective reminders that is 9 into 11 into 12 upon 9 into 11 into 13 upon 12 this is in accordance with remainder theorem now 9 by 12 gives remainder 9 11 by 12 gives remainder 11 and 13 by 12 will give you remainder 1 again you can replace 9 11 and 13 by their respective remainder that is 9 11 and 1 again divided by 12 so this will be 99 divided by 12 so 12 it is a 96 and you will get 3 as your reminder simple now let us move ahead yes a very interesting concept this concept has not been discussed in all the books but I would like to discuss it over here and I would like you to note this down concept of equal reminders we will understand this concept with the help of a very simple example. Let us consider two numbers 7 and 4. Now divide 7 by 4. Divide 7 by 3. You will get 1 as a reminder. Divide 4 by 3. Again you will get 1 as a reminder. So here in both the case you are getting the same reminder. Now let us see the difference between 7 and 4 7 by 4 is 3 and this 3 is obviously perfectly divisible by 3 so let us conclude one very simple principle when two numbers here 7 and 4 are divided by same number n here n is equal to 3 gives same reminder that is 1 then the difference between them is perfectly divisible by n the difference is also 3 that is also obviously perfectly divisible by 3 so this is the basic principle that you should keep in mind whenever the question uh, containing and uh, asking you to determine the equal reminder type question okay let us see when 15662 and 18894 when divided by two digit number n we get same value of reminder which of the following is the value of n? Now here we are having two four options. Okay. 15662188894 are two given numbers. Let us see what is the the, the difference. 18894 minus 15662 gives 3232. Now try to divide 3232 by 61 and obviously 61 won't divide 3232. Same goes for 11 and 91. But when you will divide 3232 by 32 it will be perfectly divisible 3 2 3 2 upon that is divided by 32 this will be 1 za 32 you get 0 as a reminder again 3 comes down not divisible put 0 in the quotient again 2 comes down 1 za 32 and you get 0 as a reminder and hence 3232 is perfectly divisible by 32 so n is equal to 32 is your required answer easy simple i hope you enjoyed this lecture and absorbed all the concepts i would like you to go through this lecture once again to concrete your concepts okay thank you have a nice day